nature to welcome you all to this World Day National Conference, Revolution and Reforms in Accounting and Taxation. The global financial crisis has affected almost every economy in the world. India was able to recover from the crisis much sooner than other economies as a number of reforms have taken place in the Indian economy for achieving fast track growth. These include the Companies Act 2013, International Financial Reporting Standards, Basic Pre Implementation, Financial Engineering, Corporate Social Responsibilities, Effective Governance, and the GST, among others. A very good morning to all of you. On behalf of Asian College of Commerce, I accord you all a very warm welcome on this salubrious winter morning to our one day national conference on revolution and reforms in accounting and taxation. HL College of Commerce is one of the foremost colleges to be established by the Ahmedabad Education Society, which again was the foremost trust and the best known trust of the state of Gujarat. The college was established in 1936 and it has made a pioneering contribution in the field of commerce education and has imparted value-based education to generations of students ensuring that they are in tune with tomorrow. The college has been accredited with the A-plus grade and re-accredited with the A grade in 2005 and 2012 respectively. This accreditation, of course, comes from the National Assessment and Accreditation Council of India, UGC. We at HL College of Commerce believe in expanding the horizons of our students, faculty, staff members, and people at large through multifarious activities which are academic oriented as well as extracurricular. This we do in order to groom our students into model citizens of Gujarat and of India. This one day national conference is our endeavor towards this objective where we shall be taking up discussions on two recent reforms which have taken place in our country, the Companies Act 2013 and the GST. Of Nishadan, 
which talked of the kind of education that Swami Vivekananda taught that he should be providing. So these conferences are in fact a step forward in those kinds of education. To begin with, I'd like to say a few words about Ahmedabad Education Society, which actually promoted this college. The Ahmedabad Education Society, as most of you perhaps already know, was the outcome of the inspiration provided by Sardar Vallabhai Patel to the then intelligentsia and the talk leaders and the prominent citizens of this region. Three of them took this advice very seriously. They were Ganesh Mamlankar, Sheikh Kasturbhai Lalbhai, and Amrit Lalbhai. Principal Munabin, Dr. Kalro, my professors, Professor D.A. Patrick and Professor M.T. Patil, I acknowledge the fact that whatever I am today, significantly it's because of the contribution of my professors, friends. It's a pleasure to be here this morning to be a keynote speaker on a seminar which probably is one of the most interesting topics in the current scenario. You all are extremely fortunate to be living in an era which is a very, very challenging and interesting era. India is passing through a period which makes it both strong and vulnerable. It makes India a superpower and it makes India vulnerable to the forces of the major political powers around the world. Economic growth whether there is a growth or not, and if so, to what extent, is also a matter of some dispute. But then, this is the era where the reforms of 1990s have started giving some fruits. But let me go back to historical background. When in 1947 we got our independence, we were influenced significantly by the then USSR, socialist economy, tremendous government intervention or interference in the field of business. We adopted socialist approach in the matter of the business and finance. Profit was a dirty word. And if you make profit, you were profiteering. In 1967, meaning there were late 60s, we had rate of income tax, maximum marginal rate of income tax, which went as high as 97.75%. Which would mean if you earn rupees 100, you keep change of rupees 2 and 25 in your pocket, rest to hand over to the government of India. And that income tax was accompanied by wealth tax, which went as high as 5% of your wealth. And if you happen to die, and everybody would die, <laughs> the government of India would be the first son because it would take in case of large estates, estate duty of as much as 85%. So if you have three sons, three sons will get 5% each. 85% will be taken out by government of India. That was the socialist economy. And the kind of, in, in this kind of structure, who wants to make money to pay to government of India? So, inefficiency, Lethargy, tax evasion, tax frauds, all this started on a large scale. In fact, tax avoidance became an industry. 
and there was always a race between the tax collectors and tax payers as to who would run fast to be sure that he can outrun the other one. All kinds of dubious and genuine modes of tax planning or tax avoidance were started. But this resulted into a situation where the economy started doing so badly that late 80s we were almost on the brink of bankruptcy. We must credit our now ex-Prime Minister Shri Manmohan Singh who was then the Finance Minister who brought in major economic reforms, opened up the economy and because of the opening up of the economy then we had the concept of capitalist way of looking at the things. Profit ceased to be a dirty word. Efficiency, the money making apparatus, they all now are being rewarded. It's here that we now find that the times have changed. And that's why I started by saying you are living in a very interesting and challenging time. It is for this reason that in these two fields, accounting and taxation, what did not evolve significantly over a period of years has suddenly started showing growth and development to a great extent. In the 1956 Companies Act was originally enacted. Schedule 6 referred to the accounting balance sheet Right up to 1977, there were no accounting standards. Everybody would write accounts according to what he believes is the correct way of writing the accounts. True and fair accounting, yes, but what is true and what is fair is my own perception. And so long as my auditor is not uncomfortable with my perception, I would write accounts. <laughs> people started realizing, government started realizing that this kind of wake system cannot really be permitted. Institute of Chartered Accountants of India for the first time in their 1977 established accounting standard board. The function of the board was to lay down accounting standards which would then have to be followed by everyone, especially every company, so as to have some kind of uniformity in the matter of writing accounts, understanding accounts, auditing accounts. Between 1977 and 1990, about 11 accounting standards were established. The matter rested there. From 1990 to 2001, about 16 more accounting standards came to be adopted. But then, with the passage of time, it was realized that these accounting standards will not really match up with the expectation of international economy. After 1990s, the Indian economy, as I said, opened up to the world economy. People started dealing with India. People started investing in India. Indians started investing abroad. If I have a joint venture in India with a foreign company being a partner in my Indian entity, I must write accounts in a manner so as to be...